this is Singapore, a city often regarded as one of the best in the world by those fortunate enough to experience it. Today, we're among those people, but we only have one day to explore and a minimal budget. So we're gonna explore the cultural side of this incredible city while doing our best not to break the bank. So we just got off the MRT at Bugis Street and it's really, really cool. This is kind of our first chance to even get out and explore anywhere in Singapore. Interesting note about this street, back from the 50s to the 80s, it was very, very popular because of its nightlife and it kind of had a, like a red light district kind of vibe. So this is Kampang Glam. This is an absolutely beautiful street. It's part of Singapore's Muslim Quarter. It feels like it's just plucked right out of a movie. It's all these 1900 shop houses that have been turned into restaurants and stores selling textiles and trinkets, as well as serving delicious smelling Middle Eastern food. This place is absolutely a vibe. Check this place out if you're in Singapore. It is beautiful. The juxtaposition between like the old shop houses and the enormous modern skyscrapers of Singapore surrounding it is surreal. Uh, do you want cold? Yeah. Uh, two cold chais, please. Okay. Can I have a mint chai? Oh, okay. yeah. All right. One, two, three, come on. Yes, please. This one is the one with the spices. Oh, good, okay. Oh, cool. thank you. Those are cute. Mm. <laughs> okay, so we got some cold chais. Mike got the mint chai, and I got the original, or the signature, I guess you should say. Uh, so they cost us eight fifty total. Uh, eight fifty Singaporean, so like six fifty, I think, I want to say US. Mmm, oh wow, that is super good. It's a little bit spicy like you kind of expect from chai. And it's really, really good flavor. It says it hits different. <laughs> and it definitely does because this is the first iced chai that I've ever had before. Or I guess it's not iced because there's no ice, but it's definitely cold and it's really, really refreshing. Do you care if I try yours? Okay. Ooh, it smells very, very, very minty, so we'll see. And it smells like real, like, mint leaves, not, like, fake. Oh, wow. That is really good. So glad I got it. <laughs> I want to drink more of it, but I won't, because <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> it's really good. Singaporean for this water, which is the most we've paid for water in the 10 months that we've been traveling. <laughs> and I know it's in like I know it's on par with what we would pay in the States, but not having done that for almost a year, it's like a little bit of a shock. We've had an amazing time exploring Arab Street and Kampong Glam, but unfortunately we are so short on time, so we're gonna make our way to Little India now to go check that out. This is a really cool city. It's unlike anywhere else I've ever been before. It is definitely the cleanest big city that we've been to. It's not without its trash. Everybody makes it sound like it's like spotless, but it is really, really, really clean for as many people as there are here. It's just a really interesting place. It's such a melting pot and the, like the smells coming from the stalls are just like unreal. There's so much like, Oh, I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's just, it's amazing. It's a really cool place. I honestly, I wish we were millionaires, like the one in six people that live here, because I would love to spend more time here, but unfortunately that is not the reality for us right now. So hopefully we'll make it big on YouTube. We'll be able to come back here and spend a month. <laughs>
This place is an architecture fanatic's dreamland. I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many different styles here. You've obviously got Muslim influence with the mosques that are around, especially like what we saw down on Arab Street. But we're also walking past these gorgeous Portuguese style buildings. And then of course you've got the crazy modern buildings that are just sprouting out from all around the city. It's wild. There's something to see on every corner. It's just like beautiful. The buildings are all so different and all gorgeous in their own way. Because of the city's financial standing, everything is really, really well preserved. I honestly wasn't sure what I was going to think about Singapore, but I really, really like it. But I also know it's the best thing for our pockets if we get out of here as fast as possible and come back when we're a little bit better off and we can spend some real time here. I think that's called a bitter melon. Oh, is that bitter melon? Yeah. And a white carrot. I don't think that's a carrot, but it looks like a carrot. I think that's a turnip. Is it a turnip? <laughs> or like a daikon radish, maybe? It looks like a white carrot. Mmm, <laughs> I smell the curry. I think we should go to India. Wow. That is, but it is beautiful. Okay, so we are standing in front of the Sea Vira Bacalia Mom. Miracalia Mon. We're standing in front of the Sea Sri Vira Macalia Mon. We're standing in front of the Sri Valia Kariamon. <laughs> I was doing so good in the beginning. <laughs> Macalia Mon. Vira Macalia Mon. Okay. We're standing in front of the Sri Vira Kalia Mon temple and it is absolutely stunning. I don't know anything about it other than it's beautiful and we're gonna go a little bit closer to it. This is the first temple in Singapore devoted to the goddess Kali who is also known as the destroyer of evil. She destroys ignorance and she also protects world order and that makes her a total badass. The goddess Kali keeps a clean house. Wash your hands, wash your feet. to an Indian wedding so that I can dress up like this and have all the pretty Mendy and Henna on my hands. I feel like we have to go to India first. Yes! We do! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> They're pretty. Uh, the United States. The States. Uh, America. America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very pretty. Those. I don't have anywhere to wear these, but I wish they did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I am absolutely famished right now and went in little India. Gotta get Indian food, right? So found this place right here called Madras New Woodland Indian Food. We're gonna check it out. All right, so round two. The place we just went didn't have a lot of their menu items available right now. So we're gonna go to another place called Kolkata Beckins, which is apparently one of the top rated Indian spots in Singapore. Excited to check it out. 
very, very hungry still. See the rainbow building. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, that's cool. It's the last surviving Chinese villa in Little India. It's really pretty. Oh, we should get one after lunch. Okay. We can come back here and try something. I know that one. Yeah. That's the only one I know, kind of John. So good. Oh, wow. This. So high tech here in Singapore. My menu is an iPad, and I order on the iPad, select what I want, go to my cart, and hit submit. I imagine. Mango lassi is two dollars. Fresh lime juice, six dollars. All right, cool. So, order it is. This is a Singapore, not on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> we can't afford food here. There are no restaurants in our future for the next two days. <laughs> Love to be on a budget, but the hawker stalls are all in downtown and they close super early because they're meant for, I guess, the business people. They're not, you know, a, just a place. So we would have had to get out early and get an early lunch, but that's not how we do things. Makes it tough. Makes it a little bit tougher, but it does look really good. They just brought us these little floofs. I don't know what they're called, but it's got a mm, good smell and sauce. Mm-hmm. I think that's the date and tamarind sauce. Yeah, super tasty. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet. We got our appetizers here, and they look amazing. So it came with a tamarind and date sauce, which sounds just amazing. Nice and sweet, hopefully a little bit sour too. So we'll do a little drizzle. As Ashley likes to say, bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, no, we're not supposed to do this. Take a bite of it. Okay. <laughs> mm. So, it's exactly what I would have thought a samosa to be, but a little bit different. Instead of being like the pureed potatoes and pea, it's got chunks and then like a curry flavoring, which is absolutely incredible. It's also got peanuts in it, which I wasn't sure what to think about it. But honestly, the peanuts add this like level of complexity that's really, really, really good. So I'm a fan. These are great. Okay, so we just finished our appetizer, and literally as soon as we were done, they brought out our entrees, and wow, this is a lot of food. So we got butter paneer, and then we also got uh, basmati rice, and it is steaming hot. It's actually kind of cold in here because the AC. Uh, so this is nice a little hand warmer over here. I'm excited. <laughs> I forgot you got it really spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. We need more water. <laughs> they listen. It's really good. Very spicy. chicken either. I've actually only tried it once now that I think about it, but I remember it being kind of sweet then too for my taste. Mm. It's quality made though. Like you can tell it's like good ingredients and they did a good job with it. I did order it very spicy. Ashley says it's really spicy. It's super good. Perfectly spicy. I'm really glad we split it because I would not be able to walk afterwards and we've got more to now we're heading back to Madras Snacks and Sweets to try some delicious Indian snacks and sweets. There's so many little things I want to try. Those little things with raisins in them. Those little things that have silver on them for some reason. <laughs> These little gloopy gloops. They look delicious. I don't know what any of it is. Me either. Which one's the best? Second one? Okay. How much? 150? Okay. Do you want to get like one of these and then one of these? 
Whatever you think. And they were both, I think, 150 Singaporean dollars, so just about a dollar US. They're warm. Mm -hmm. But that's probably just because it's hot outside. <laughs> I sure do. So this is Latou, and she said it's sweet and it's their specialty. It smells very cardamom-y. It's like a little fried ball with raisins and... All right, let's give it a try. Hmm. Oh yeah. It's like a donut hole, but softer. I don't know how else to describe it texturally. It's unlike anything I've ever had. It is really good. It definitely has some chai spice in there, some like cardamom and maybe, yeah, I don't, I really don't know how to describe it, but it's got honey in it, so it's very, very sweet, but still pretty light for being a fried kind of pastry dessert. Very, very good. All right, let's try the olivar. Now this, I don't know whether this is sweet or not because I forgot when I was ordering it that it is sweets and snacks. So, it looks like it would be sweet. It kind of looks like a gelatinous cube that has swallowed a whole bunch of nuts and berries. All right. It doesn't really smell like much, but let's go. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Is it sweet? Mm-hmm. It's so good. It reminds me kind of of like those really crappy Christmas fruit cakes you would get in the States. Mmm, it's so good though. It's so much better than that because it's not like cake, it's like gelatin. There's this lovely flavor that is so familiar, but I cannot pinpoint it or put my finger on what it is. Oh my God, it's so delicious. You have to try this one. It looks interesting. Mm. <laughs> it sticks to your teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does taste really good though. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. No idea how to describe it. Other than sweet and very sticky. Also very delicious. Thing to note in Singapore, I found another law. Do not feed the pigeons as cute as they may be, there's a $10,000 fine for feeding them, which is crazy. But you mm. love feeding pigeons. Mm-hmm, I like pigeons. Everyone thinks they're like the rats of the sky, but I just think they're a bird. Pigeons sitting under a don't feed the pigeon sign seems like they're picketing. <laughs> <laughs> like they're little pigeon protesters. I think they're cute. Yeah, they're adorable little birds. Okay. Some of them are scruffy looking. Oh, mmm. I don't like this one quite as much. It's mm. really good, mm. but it's not as good as this other thing. I see what you mean though, it does taste like chai tea kind of. Yeah, glad we stopped by to try these desserts. It's always nice after eating some spicy food to get something kind of sweet to end the meal, but we barely ever get dessert, <laughs> unless we're at a night market. And then sometimes we start with dessert. Yeah. This is a cute little part of town though. I've never been to a like little India. Mm -mm. What? Moment of anger, <laughs> lifetime of regret, punishment for voluntarily causing hurt, imprisonment of up to two years, and or a fine of up to $5,000. Half the price of feeding <laughs> pigeons. So you can punch somebody and get a less fine than feeding a pigeon in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> Our next destination is about an hour walk away, and normally walking wouldn't be so bad for us, but one, it's very, very hot, and two, we're a little bit limited on time, so we're on our way to the bus stop now so we can catch our bus and get to our next destination. It's fresh squeezed orange juice. Oh yeah, it sure is. Two dollars a cup. That doesn't even seem that bad. It smells amazing over here. Disregard what I said, we are going to the MRT, so we're gonna take the MRT to our next destination, which is way better, because the MRT is nice and cool. Love of my life always over here sticking her tongue out at me. <laughs> oh my God. Excuse me. 
thought she was giving me a kiss. No! Come over here and being a little lizard. <laughs> She's always being a reptile to me. Snappy turtle. So, fun turn of events. We actually found out you can sing in public in Singapore. You just can't sing the curse words of a song. Yeah. So. That's fair. Yeah, I feel she like that's fair. Around and like Shouting obscenities anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who does that? Lots of people. I know. Hopefully we're going in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing us. I'm still not convinced. Cool thing is here too is at the airport they tried to tell us that you needed to buy a prepaid card for the MRT and that they're no longer doing single transactions. That's not true at all. If you have a credit card that you can tap to pay, all you have to do is tap it at the turnstile, you're good to go. We made it to Chinatown. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure yet because we just got off the escalator, but I think we might have saved the best for last. Where are you at? Thoughts? Casanova? Oh, oh dear. I bet this place is super cute at night where all the lights are on. Oh, yeah. And all the colorful buildings. Whoever that is. Uh, Both Arab Street and Chinatown have this, this very curated, almost plucked out of a theme park type vibe. And Little India didn't really have one of those, so maybe we missed something? Let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. This is Pagoda Street, by the way. Oh, there's the Chinatown Heritage Center. It tells you about the history of Chinatown in Singapore. Oh. We don't have time to do it, but I wish that we did. So okay. if we ever come back, we'll go. Yeah, for sure. When we hit 100,000 subscribers, we'll celebrate in Singapore. <laughs> I like it. Those little chopstick holders. <laughs> oh man. It's my dude Totoro. Oh, that building is beautiful. This one? Yeah. How lie woo? Alright, so now having been to all three of the cultural centers, what's your favorite? Probably still say Arab Street. Yeah, same. I think so too. This one's my second favorite. Sorry, Little India. <laughs> but I liked Arab Street because it was so different. Yeah. And the food, like, it, oh, it smells were just like... It smelled incredible. And I don't know, there was, I guess, here it's like there's various restaurants and bars playing kind of club music, just like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in Arab Street, there were like there was prayers going out over the loudspeakers. So I kind of think it added to the vibe and the ambiance of mm -hmm. where we were a little bit more. I know it was super touristy, but it felt a little bit more like authentic, I guess. Yeah. Because the prayer was going on and that was a real thing. It wasn't just kind of like, like you said, the like, and there were honestly, I think less tourists there. It seemed a little bit yeah. less, less crowded. It's a little bit later in the day though. It's true. I don't know, there's more places to explore here, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's go do that. I guess I can't really judge this place until I've seen it all. Oh, it's like a little indoor market. Oh, wow, look at that pagoda. It seems to be like the main square hanging out. Got people playing checkers. There's this absolutely gorgeous pagoda. Whoa, look at that building. I've never seen like a more incredible blend of old and new like I have in Singapore. Mm -hmm. It's really, really beautiful. Ashley's old and I'm new. You're older than I am. Oh, that is beautiful. Sorry, Pigeon, we know it's confusing, but that's not real water and that's not real food. Just 
come upon some kind of thing. We just stopped in a 7-Eleven. Got a little pick-me-up because for some reason I am exhausted. Now we're going to our next destination. I think we're gonna walk though this time instead of taking the MRT. Ashley says it's close. I trust her. She's getting better at directions, that's for sure. There are just so many incredible buildings here. The designs and just the thought that gets put into them is wild. And then the ones that aren't really incredible or remarkable in any sort of way usually have some sort of beautiful mural or street art or something like that to spruce them up. I see you, Singapore. Like, look at this. This is old and new. One second. That's what I'm talking about. There's these old buildings and then just new, amazing, modern superstructures just popping up out of nowhere behind them or beside them or reflecting in their windows. Singapore is really, really cool. It is very expensive, but again, only when you compare it to its surrounding countries. If you're coming here from Australia or Canada or any European country or the US, it's really not that bad. It's like going on vacation to Hawaii or Alaska. So this is the Clark Key Riverwalk. This is our next destination to come check out. There's cafes and restaurants lining the river here. You can take boat tours. The building across the street is the Portuguese style that we've seen kind of throughout the city. Each grouping of windows is a rainbow of colors, so it is quite cute. Now go explore? Yeah, let's go explore. Okay. So you walk into this little tunnel here, and it'll take you under the road, I guess? And then you can get to the really colorful part of the river walk. Pretty colorful. Yeah, <laughs> George W. Bush. All sorts of very interesting Western <laughs> references, and then like a lion. Artists are artists, man. Also, I just realized it, but right here is the Marina Bay Sands. Hotel, which is that iconic building here in Singapore. I only noticed it when we started looking at these people on the slingshot. We're gonna end up there eventually, but right now we're checking out this river walk. We just got to the ticket booth of the Singapore River Cruise on Clark Key. Now it's $28 per person if you want to ride. I've heard mixed reviews about it, so we're not gonna do it. Uh, we've actually got a show to catch, which you can probably guess what it is. It's what everybody does when they come to Singapore. But we've got about 45 minutes until the first show and then an hour, 45 minutes until the second. There is a dish that we wanna try here while we're downtown though, so we're gonna be on the hunt for that and we're gonna keep walking around Clark Key because it's super cute and all of the rainbow buildings are right up my alley, so let's keep looking. Are those the Hooters owls? They sure are. I feel like that's about it for the riverfront. Now we're gonna make our way to our final destination, which you've probably guessed. Oh, level up? Is that an arcade? Maybe it's not it. So we've got about 30 minutes to get to where our end destination is, but I believe we're gonna make a stop and try something that is very, very special and regional to Singapore. It's supposed to be like just a huge dish that is very popular here. Hopefully not like a huge physically sized dish because I don't know that I've got that much eat in me, but we might not even make it to our end destination in time for the first thing anyways. So might as well stop and check out this regional specialty of Singapore. And I think we're about to be right there. It's called Hooters. It's not called Hooters. Ashley's on a mission right now. She's been obsessed with this building with the colored windows. I'm gonna 
don't count the traffic, my love. Too, because you've taken so many photos of <laughs> this does so we were gonna stop and get some food and try one of Singapore's regional dishes chili crab but then we found out how much money it is and at 108 Singapore dollars per kilogram that is just something we can't afford and now it sounds like there's some epic concert going on in the back behind us. And we're just weaving through traffic cones. Like, look at that building with the lights. It's so cool. And then it turns into a tunnel. <laughs> Aw, <Aww>, bummer. <laughs> well, we're in it now. That was the worst escalator ever. Apparently they have uh, like performances or something every single day of the year. Wow, really? Apparently. I think that's what I read on the door. Something's going on. I feel like it's funny that it's taken us all day in Singapore to get to this location just because I feel like this is where most people come first. And we were like, nah. Right above Ashley's head is the famous Marina Bay <laughs> Sands Hotel, roughly like about $1,000 US per night. If you've watched a video or know anything about Singapore, you've heard people talk about this building or you've seen photos or whatever of this building. Yeah, there it is. It is really unique and cool looking. And it's very beautiful all lit up at night. It also looks like there's not all of the rooms are occupied. And at $1,000 a night, I can understand why. <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah, one day. Ashley is very excited about it. What you guys didn't see is walking up here, she's like, I want to stay there one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there they are. Oh, yeah. Can you see them? Yeah. They're still so far away. Singapore feels like a city made of feature pieces. Like, every city has their thing, their one piece that kind of defines them that you see on postcards. And I feel like Singapore is its own because there's just so many of those things, so many individual unique buildings or structures. This whole place is its own feature piece. Like this bridge. Yeah, there's just, I mean, every building is insanely beautiful or has something unique about it or has some cool lights that are going off. Like, yeah. it is just really really cool this is i think one of the coolest cities i've ever been to now i'd say magnificent that's like a word that i feel yeah. like describes this city for sure looks like we've just reached the garden and it's a really nice green space in the middle of this massive city it's like a little playground and a gym get your fit on there's instruments apparently there are two sets of super tree groves and one was blocked for a private event. And uh, yeah, we just used it as a little cut through. Don't mind us. We didn't stay long.
The magical lights of the super trees dance to the songs of Singapore, and we couldn't have asked for a better way to end our short stay here. We had an amazing day exploring the incredible city of this tiny but uniquely beautiful country. While we wish we had more time, a new adventure awaits. So if you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hello, consider subscribing to follow us on our future adventures. As always, we'll see you in the next one. Garden Rhapsody is brought to you by Gardens by the Bay.